can do all things, God. You do all things well. We thank and praise you for creating us, fashioning us in your sight, believing in us, hoping that, and trusting and, and giving us everything that we need to serve you adequately, God. We ask that you help us to yield to your presence, yield to be obedient to what you say, God. Anyone out there, God, who's listening and thinking there's no hope, there's hope in Jesus. There is hope in Jesus. In the infallible proof, there is hope in Jesus. You cannot fail. You cannot fail, God. Oh, we ask that you bless the service, that you have blessed the song, that you have blessed the musicians, that you have blessed the woman of God who's coming before you today to speak what you have placed in my heart. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We've just come to give God thanks and praise for being in his presence one more time. Y'all forgive me. I got my baby up here. It's very unorthodox. Please forgive me. Don't tell my daddy on me. <laughs> We're going to sing this song. We're going to give God the praise the best way we know how. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
that were closed in my face. You opened doors that I didn't even see. God, I thank you and I praise you. God, I thank you and I praise you. You've been so good. You woke me up this morning. You started me on my way. God, I didn't deserve it. But you did it anyway. And God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. For me to the Lord is there for my life. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's continue to give God a praise as our very own evangelist that both comes before us. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> there is a spirit of praise in this place tonight. I think we came with a mind to real. You, we know God has been good to us, right? I'm looking at some happy people with happy expressions on your face because God is a good God. My God, He has been good to us. Y'all can go ahead and be seated. <laughs> I thank and praise God for this opportunity to bring uh, forth uh, what God placed in my heart tonight. I'm just so grateful to God's goodness and his mercy, his love. I had a good time with God today. Um, I messed around and went on Jason Dozer's, his Facebook page, and my God, there was a man preaching the word of God on there. It, 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 he wouldn't have been four minutes, but that thing was good. Um, he said, and I, I just want to, I'm going to get to the word, but a video, he shared something. He said, never judge a book by its cover. He talked about how he um, went to get his hair cut, but his regular barber couldn't cut his hair. And he said, well, I'm going to have somebody else cut, cut your hair. Her name is Julie. And he thought, well, I need my hair cut. Okay. Send on Julie. And when Julie came around the partition, Julie's hair was spiked all different kind of ways. Every spike seemed like it had a different color. And on her face, she had multiple piercings. I mean, all over. Have you seen those people that have piercings all over their face? Even in the crevice of her eye was a pierce. She had on a polka dot shirt or something, her shirt and her um, pants didn't even match. Then she's had on different shoes, and he thought about that thing. And his name was Jack, and her name was Julie. So he said, um, he asked, was Jack there? He said he started to say Jack had to leave. <laughs> but he thought about he's a Christian. God was not going to be pleased with that because he was Jack. And he had already judged her. In his mind, he's thinking, Okay, get in here, do my hair, let it get it over with, because I'm getting out of here. <laughs> I don't want to have much to say to you. He couldn't get past how she looked. So after you start doing a hair, she said to him, do you work? He said, yes, I work in the, down the street, a world evangelism. He's a minister, plus he works with the world evangelism organization. And so she said, my mother went there last week. He, and she said, I was there last week or something. And he said, you were in the building, in the World Evangelism building? She said, yeah. She said, my mother is a cocaine addict. She said her another family mother, member was a cocaine addict. But she said, those people there gave her something and they, she brought her mama brought it home. They put it on, and they listened. She said, "I didn't understand everything, but at the end of what I watched, I know one thing: I didn't want to go to hell. I didn't want to go to hell." He began to think about all the ways he had judged her. I mean, come on now! If somebody came here with spiked hair, ear, I mean, piercings from head to toe. And, and then paint, different kind of paints on your body, different clothes, we would be like, ooh, you know, it would, it would kind of shake us because we're not used to that. But after he, he had to ask God to forgive him, 
he told her and he, as she talked to him about the tape and what she heard, that she didn't understand it, everything, but she did understand that she needed a savior and she wanted to be saved. But she didn't understand how to do it, how to go about getting the salvation. How do I get, get no, that I'm forgiven? He told her, I'm going to go right down to that, to that building where I work. I'm, I'm going to get a Bible and I'm going to come back. He had Bible study with her on the bench outside. And by the time she began to cry, as she began to tell her story, and every barber in that barbershop was crying along with her. Do you see the significance of the impact we as Christians can make? He never imagined he was going to meet someone named Julie that looked like someone that came out of a, maybe a horror movie, you know. And, but she was a lost soul, a soul who yearned for God, a soul that somebody had taken time and given a DVD and the mama on cocaine had came to the house and all three of them sat down and they looked at it. And she just wanted to know when she got done, I want to be saved. I don't want to go to hell. But she had no one to show her. She had no one to guide her. Until God made a way that his regular barber was going to be out that day. And he was going to be in that chair. He had to get beyond his prejudice, his reluctance. But God, thank God he met up. She, Julie met up with Jack that day. And by the time I looked at that, Jada, I was in my room crying out to God. I, you would have thought we were. Ha I was having church. I was crying out to God, saying, "God, in the name of Jesus, I got to meet that mark. You know, I got to got to meet the mark that you have created me to be. I can't come short of it, God. I've got to meet that mark." I was in the house. My grandson was downstairs. I'm up there. Hey, Lord. Hey, glory. And I guess he probably saying, "What in the world?" <laughs> I could care less. I was crying out to God. God will help us in the small, minute things. And I want to tell you before I even get started. I had um, insomnia. I couldn't go to sleep. Four o'clock in the morning. I'm still at five. I'm thinking, oh, I got to get up. I got to go to work. I know I got to bring the word. I can't go to sleep. And I just, I said, okay, I got my cell phone out. I said, let me start texting my manager. I said, her name. I will not be in the work. Then I stop. I said, wait a minute. I don't have no excuse. <laughs> I can't say I'm not coming to work because I'm sick. I'm not sick. I don't have a sneeze. I don't have a <laughs> cough. I have nothing. Nothing's wrong with me. I said, Lord, I'm not going to lie. You know, sometimes we call them white lies and black lies. I don't know why we say that. As if a white lie is better than a black lie. Lies a lie. Regardless, you know, you can't just say, hey, I'm not coming in today. You don't own the company. You have to have to give them a reason. But I said, I'm going to work. I said, I'm not going to tell a, a fabrication or a lie. I said, God, please give me strength. Please don't let me be overly sleepy. I said, please give me the strength to come back here tonight and do what I need to do. I wasn't sleepy at all. Not one, one second of the day. We have to make the choices to do what's right, even in small little matters. Getting back to Jack. Jack could have walked out when he saw Julie come around the corner. He could have said, absolutely not. She is not going to put her hand in my hair today because he didn't like the way she looked. But he didn't do that. He sat there. He went through his multiple prejudice. Now, she didn't know he was prejudiced. But he was, he was struggling in that chair. But by the time she got to telling him, she had went down to the world. He's supposed to be world evangelism, right? But we supposed to only evangelize to, to save people, or clean people, never dirty people, never smelly people, never, you know, drug people. What, 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 we're, we're, we're supposed to be evangel evangelizing. And it's, oh, here goes the one. It's not just the preachers or the evangelists who's supposed to do this. We're all supposed to, the Great Commission is for the saints of God, for Christians, all of us, not just 
ministers, bishops, pastors. So I want to talk about something. I'm going somewhere with this. I have some scriptures. But I want to go ahead and start off on that. You know, God is a very specific God. Have you ever noticed when you read the word, he's very specific? He's not like some of us sometimes when we have prayer. We're not really specific. I learned a long time ago, someone said, when you pray, you be specific. Don't just throw stuff up halfway, but be specific. What do you want from God? What do you need from God? The proof of God's being specific, that's in creation. Let's take a look at creation. When he formed creation from the power of his words, and people say there's no God. Come on now. And anybody, anybody created anything just from the power of your words? I mean, put okay, I'm on a tree. I'm on an oak tree over there. And it came over there. Now I got to go plant it. Buy it probably from Walmart. Go to Bishop and ask how to plant it because I probably don't know how. And then plant. But we don't create, you know. So God is God. He's all powerful, all knowing. He simply said, let there be. And it was. The sun was created to shine a great light on earth. And the moon, the lesser light, shines at night. And isn't it amazing, after all these years, how we are still being warmed when God said, let there be light. Years have passed, thousands of years passed. And um, he created the stars. God created the land animals and the sea creatures. But you know something? They know from birth what environment they should dwell in. They know from birth. There's no confusion, where should I go? Am I supposed to be in the forest or am I supposed to be in the ocean? They know exactly where they're supposed to be. For example, a large female tortoise, she instinctively knows to come to a beach, sand. She has to have sand to lay her multiple eggs. She lays them, she hauls that body. And let me tell you, them tortoises are big. They weigh a lot. And on the sand, on the beach, she's out of her comfort zone because that is really hard for her. But she struggles, come up through her little, getting up there, laying her little egg, her eggs. And she covers them up and returns to the sea. Now, when those baby tortoises hatch, they instinctively know to head towards the ocean. They've not been trained. They've not had a class, one-on-one. When you hatch, this is where you go. God placed that in them, and they know that is the environment by which they can go, they can thrive. That is where they belong. They can't stay on the sand. They'll burn. They'll die. Predators will pick them up from the, pick them off, the birds and eagles, whatever, from the sky. They know instinctively, I got to get to that water. That water is my home. That's my place. That's my happy place. That's where I have been created to go. You don't have to tell them that. Because God made it like that. And because of the numbers, even though some of them are, you know, the enemy, the predators get them. But because of the great numbers, they make it. Some, a lot of them make it. In Isaiah 64, 8, King James Version, it says, but now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay, and thou art potter, and we are the work of thy hand. So a potter is a creator. I know you've looked. If you can put that picture of the potter, my topic up there. Um, I can't do that, never desired to do that, but I like watching it. The potter is the one that determines what shape that clay is going to be. How high, how wide, they determine the purpose of what they're making. What that clay can't say, I don't want to be a bowl. I want to be a vase. They have no control over where they're heading, what their use is. But the potter definitely has control over the ability of what that clay is going to become, that lump of clay. The vessel is made with a distinctive purpose in mind. It has already been determined by the potter what it will be. 
plans have already been made by the potter. This clay is going to be a beautiful vase. This lump of clay that I'm forming will hold flowers. And it's going to be beautiful. So the potter has expectations, high expectations of what that vessel will be used for, the exact manner in which they created it for. Now, Jeremiah 18, 4, 6, Amplified Bible says, but the vessel that he is making from the clay was spoiled by the potter's hand. So he made it over, reworking it and making it into another pot that seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter does? Says the Lord, look carefully as the clay is in the potter's hands. So are you in my hand, O house of Israel. In other words, sometimes potters, they I've seen them, they, they go to make something and it, it, they call it marred. It gets marred. It just doesn't turn out the way they want it. So they decide, I'm going to make it a different way. Now, this is a human natural potter. I'm not talking about the God, the potter. He doesn't make any mistakes. Uh, his, his clay, which we are, we're never marred in his hand because he knew exactly Patricia DeBeau <laughs> was going to be born September the 23rd, 1959. He knew I was going to be African American. He knew I was going to be born to Audrey Smith. He knew I was going to be born a New Jerseyan. Yeah, I sound like a Southern, but I'm a Jersey girl. I really do. Been down here so many years. He knew exactly what I was going to be, how tall I was going to be. I might want to be five, five, eight, but guess what? I didn't make it there. <laughs> five, three and a quarter, but five, four, I have to go four. Um, that's as high. <laughs> That's as high as I'm, that's as tall as I'm going. Because he says so. I have grandchildren, 13. I'm up there like looking at them. What did I tell you to do? But <laughs> this is who he made me. This is who I am. So what he's saying, God is saying, I determine what you will become. I have made you for a purpose. And the purpose for which I have made you, I am waiting and I'm working with you, but I want you to become what I have created you to be. Because I'm God, and I look carefully as the clay is in the potter's hand, he said, so are you in my hand. In other words, I'm the big honcho. I'm God, not you. What I say is going to go. I don't want to put it so blunt, but you either get with God's plan or you're out of the will. Now, I want to personalize this. Old Bible Way Church of Sumter, you are in God's hand. Can God not use you for the purpose he has formed you? Put that slide on up for me. All right. Y'all going to participate. Repeat after me. Just repeat. Don't go any clip. I know you see it, but just repeat. Oh, Say your name. Patricia. I don't hear all these names coming out. Oh, all right. Okay. Can God not use me for the purpose he has for me? Can he? He has the right to use you, to use me for the purpose he has for me. He has a right to say what he is going to use me for in his kingdom and what job. Like Jack met up with Julie at that barbershop at that, you know, time and space. He put Jack there just to meet Julie. He formed him just to meet Julie because she was a soul. Her mother was a cocaine addict. Her other family member was a cocaine addict. And he met, he had to meet together to give her hope, to explain to her who he was. She was crying. She didn't know who Jesus was. The only thing she know, I don't want to go to hell. But somebody needs to help and tell me. How can I, how can I 
miss this thing called hell. I want to go to heaven. So God, I don't know, Jack looked like he was in his late 30s. And I don't know how she, Julie was young, but he had to meet up together at that specific time. So if we say God is our potter and we are the clay, why can't God tell us what to do, where to go, and how to do it so he can have somebody meet us up somewhere and we can tell them about the kingdom of God, about the love of God, how God saved our soul, how he delivered us from drugs, how he delivered us out of shacking, how he delivered us out of so many things. Because they're thinking that they don't have any hope. But we got to get past this prejudice of looking at people like, hmm, <laughs> what's she doing here? My God, look at her. We have to get past those things. We have to, because you know what? She, she was lost. She needed a savior. And Jack was the person to lead her to that savior. Had a personal Bible study. Had a personal Bible study with her. So if God is in charge of our lives because he is the potter and we are the clay. But you know the complexity of us being the clay. There's a, it's, it's complex when it comes to humans. You know when a tortoise, a baby tortoise hatch, they instinctively go to the water. Because they, animals weren't created like that. You know, a lion, no, he, 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 he's, you know, he's all that and then some. And, he, you know, he, he has birthed you predators and he instinctively, and it's mainly the females that do that hunting. And, but you better believe when he walk on the scene, he going to eat first. That's how it is. But he understands that. They understand that order. The tortoise understood, I need to get to the water. I've got to get to the ocean. That's where I need to be. With us, though, we're complex. As opposed, we're a very, you know, we are given the ability of choice. And that's where the complexity comes in. We're given the ability to choose. Whether we decide to yield to the potter, or I'm going to do my own thing. Why? It's my life. I can do what I want to do with it. I can take it where I want to go. I can be where I want to, what to be. And you know what? And none of us have the, none of us have the ability to put oxygen in our own body, but it's our life. That blows me away. If it wasn't for the grace and mercy of God, I wouldn't even woke up this morning. Yet it's my life. No, I belong to God. It's His life that He's given me. But we become very complex because of the ability to choose. We can choose. I can choose whether I want to serve God. I can choose whether I don't want to serve God. Unlike the animals who instinctively know what they are and they perform that thing to the day they die. Sometimes, unfortunately, and I say unfortunately, because our time on earth is limited. And sometimes we take years to decide if we will yield to God's purpose for our lives, we seek and search for our purpose through other people who had no part in creating us. We're going to people, what do you see in me? What do you think I should be? What do you think I should do? Who do you think I should marry? Who do you, what church do you think I should go to? We asked them a million questions about our lives and they didn't even create us. How can they see, how can they have enough foresight to tell me about my life when their life is, is raggedy and all messed up. Because if they had that much foresight, they wouldn't be in the predicament that they were in. We run into people seeking answers. We run after pop-up trends to define who we are. I mean, one day it's, it's cool to be this way and it's cool to be that way. And what we should be doing with our life. Bypassing God, not even asking him, not seriously asking him. We allow society to tell us what we what is acceptable in order to go to heaven. Really? Now, who has created heaven that they can say that this you must do, you do this and you will automatically get in? They're not the creator of heaven. They're not the creator of eternal life. Yet we're running. And I do think it's kind of sad sometimes, you know, because 
not only do I work, my daughter and I have a business, so we do a lot of social media. We're on there promoting. A lot of people take their problems to social media. Facebook, mainly Facebook, because Instagram don't play that. You get a few little words, put a picture up, and you go about your business. But Facebook, you can tell, man, you open some people's, and it'd be this long. I got time to read all that. I don't have time to read all that. It's too much info. But some people, it's sad because they haven't cultivated a relationship with God or even someone who's connected to God. And every time they go, go through something, oh, I'm just tired of this stuff. And everyone, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? You know, a million posts go up. What's wrong? What's wrong? Then they go into it. We need to look to God, the author and finisher of our faith. Not to man to lead and guide us into all wrong direction. John 5, 39 through 41. You search and keep on searching and examining the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And yet it is those very scriptures that testify about me and still are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. I do not receive glory or approvals from men. In other words, God doesn't have to, he doesn't need anyone's approval to be God. He is God all by himself. Whether you like the scriptures, you like what he says. You know, sometimes there's a lot of, I was talking to someone and one heard that one, one woman said that the reason why she doesn't like Christianity it's because she wants everyone to be equal. Now, I know God, we're equal in God's sight. He loves us equally. But then what she meant was she doesn't like the authority, the authority that God placed. Jesus, man, woman, children. No, no, no. For some women, it ain't going to work. So they pick and choose which scriptures they like. And even though they have, there goes that complexity again called choice. But you can pick and choose yourself right on out of heaven. That doesn't mean God doesn't value women or doesn't give us power and the ability to walk in um, authority or victory. But if you're married, you have an authority head above your head. And that's called that man that you said that I do. So. Some people don't want to go to, you have the scriptures. That's what it said. You got all these scriptures. In the very scriptures that you're reading, they testify about me. They're telling you about me. They're telling you what I want, what I will accept, what I deem as holy and righteous. But you're not accepting it. You don't like it. And you're unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. God is saying, I created you for life. Not just to live victorious here, but the eternal life. I created you so you could, like Jack and Julie met, you can, I can send you to somebody and they can hear about me through you. They can get saved and be adopted into the kingdom of God. And who knows? Julie, maybe about a few years, you may not see piercings all over her face. You know, she still might have the spikes. You know, we have our thing, ladies. Especially African American, we're red one day, <laughs> we're we're blue the next, we're blonde, and so if she wants to have different hair color, that's up to her. But maybe she may take some of those little piercings off, you know. So you know, who knows? But the thing is, she needed someone to tell her about the Savior. So God had Jack meet Julie. Who is God preparing for us to meet? Are we living and following God to the point where God can entrust us and give us an assignment to meet? Would we have gotten out of that chair and said absolutely 100%, here come the devil. The devil's a liar. Well, we were the devil one time. We act like the devil because the devil was our father. He was our father. We were serving sin. So we all have an appointment. And, and jobs and purpose within us. But are we staying with God, seeking God, reading the Bible enough to know what that purpose is? We're getting 30, 40, 50, 60. Well, what, God, what, God, what has God placed in you? What's your purpose? I don't know. 
I still don't know what my purpose is. You close to 70 at this point. Now, if you just get saved at 70 or 80 or something, then that's one thing. But you've been this thing to a long time. Why haven't you sought your purpose with God? Why haven't you kneeled before God, prayed, fasted, went before God? When Moses went on that mountain and saw that burning bush, he got his purpose right there. But he went and looked when he saw that strange light. We've been with God for years and years and years, and we still don't know our purpose. Something's wrong. We need to know our purpose. Because if we don't know who we are in Christ, how we can tell somebody else about them becoming grown and full in Christ, and we ain't getting grown and full in Christ for ourselves. It doesn't work like that. Mankind is the only creation that God made that struggles to obey the purpose for which God has created him to be. Mankind is the overall terminology, but you don't have to be included in that. You know, and so even coming to church and praising God and, and being on this committee, that committee, this and that, it's wonderful. And you should do it. You should serve God with your whole heart. But make sure as we're serving God with our whole heart, we are also seeking God and putting enough input into our relationship with God that God is telling us why he's created us. He's given us assignments. He's giving, he's entrusting us with something he can, he can trust us to do. So one thing about me, I don't like to go beyond my words. This is what God has given me. The potter's wheel. If we're truly on God's wheel, he's the, um, he's the potter, we're the clay. Then are we allowing God to make and mold and shape us? Or are we shaping ourselves? And when we go through that shaping ourselves process, that takes years away from where he wants us to be. He might have said, well, I want to get Patricia job, but because she wouldn't allow me to shape her and mold her and wouldn't allow me to tell her and, and, and touch her heart and un let her understand she needs to grow up. Or So then I have to go ahead and give that assignment to Missionary McFadden. He's going to get that assignment done, whether he gets it done through who he intended to do it or through somebody else. He's going to get it done. But we want it done through us. Whatever God has for us, we want it done through us. Whatever God has for us we want to be able to do it okay i do praise god for that let's have a prayer um about that and then i'm going to turn it over to bishop um for the rest of the remaining of the service thank you i appreciate it <laughs> dear god in the name of jesus we thank and praise you we want to be submissive we want to allow you to have your way in our lives. We don't want a lot of years to pass by and we still are stubbornly not yielding to you. We want to be a vessel meant for the master's use so you can entrust us to tell somebody about Jesus, to help somebody else come to you like you were good to send somebody to help us come to you, God. Help us, God, be honest with ourselves. Help us to be true about where we are in the Lord. And if we're falling short, help us to repent and to do what you say do. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to be what God made you to be. Hallelujah. That's why the words say, choose you this day who you're going to serve. Hallelujah. And that's God. He's the, make, he's the, he's the one that makes us. Praise God. And I, I was uh, talking about it a little bit on about Isaiah 53 on Sunday. How God just that word ministered to me. Yeah, I've been reading it for years, but it ministered to me in a different way. Praise God. And I look at it, you know, we talk, we're dealing with resurrection. Resurrection Sunday, praise God. And in that chapter, 
God, Jesus, uh, Isaiah saw Jesus going through everything human has to go through. And yet he remained faithful. Hallelujah. Now that's amazing. Praise God. Some people don't want to say Jesus, you know, didn't want to recognize him. But praise God, Isaiah, the prophets, and all the prophets, right? Here, saw him back in their time. Hallelujah. And we struggle to see him today. After we have the written word validated by the word. Hallelujah. How God knew the end at the beginning. Hallelujah. It's just a blessing, praise God, to be saved. It's a blessing to know God and to find your purpose in the Lord. God had to show me my purpose. I say he had to show me, but through his anointing and through his word and through my desire to know. Hallelujah. Because I was, I, 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 did, now I declare myself unqualified. To be anybody preacher. You know, I tried to get God to make, get my wife to preach, and I didn't work. <laughs> Praise God. He didn't back up. He, when he, what he was speaking to me in my heart and in my spirit, what he's revealing to me, let me to know that, hallelujah, this is what I want you to go and do. And when I surrender to it, praise God, I found myself finding my way in Christ Jesus. That's what it's all about, saints. Getting to know him in a personal way. Getting to know the Lord and allow him to show you and to help you see where he wants you to go. Just as you, uh, Evangelist DeBoer was saying, praise God, just follow God. Get to know him first. You can't follow him if you don't know him. Hallelujah, you got to have his spirit that speaks to our spirit. Because the devil is speaking to your mind every day. Hallelujah. He still speaks to my mind. But if I didn't know Jesus, and if you didn't know him, you would find yourself going the way he wants you to go. Hallelujah. So we thank God for the word tonight. We thank God. Hallelujah. Just before we come to the offering, maybe let us all say, anyone want to come to the offering, you have a need for prayer going through. I know we want to be praying for pastor. He's got a condition in his back. Praise God. But if anyone else need to come and stand at the altar, praise God. And we just want to believe God with you and for you. Hallelujah. If you're wondering about your destiny, destiny, praise God, you're not sure. There's nothing wrong with coming to the altar and, and in prayer. And say, Lord, help me to know where you want me to go. Help me to know what you want me to do. We don't have to stand and just wonder about it. And admire other people. Gift in the Lord. Gifted in the Lord. God has placed something in every one of us. There's a gift in every one of us in here. That God wants to magnify. Thank you Jesus. Let us pray with your sister. Oh God our Father we thank you. We love you and we praise you. As our sister stand before us oh God. And stand before you. Believing you and trusting you to meet that need she is standing in right now. Give her the strength, the courage, and the mind, Lord, to accept your will in whatever it may be that she is standing in need of. Have your way, God. Have your way. And we will always give you praise. We will give you glory. We will give you honor, Lord, because we know that you are God. You cannot lie because you are the truth. You are the way and you are the light. So we thank you right now for being a blessing, bringing that blessing to fruition in our life right now in Jesus' name. We bind up the hand of the adversary in every way or form or fashion he tried to come against what she's believing you for. We take authority over it right now in the name of Jesus. Just have your way, Lord. Have your way as we give you praise. We give you glory for victory in our life right now in Jesus' name. Can we all give God a praise? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We believe, we believe, and we trust God for a mighty word. At this time, we want to come and receive our offering. Praise God.
And if you have an offering you want to offer up on tonight, just lift it in your hand. Let us all stand as we give thanks for the offering that God has blessed us to give in the, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. We thank you for this offering we're about to, about to give right now in the name of Jesus. You bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. You should come from the side aisles and, and give your offering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I believe God. I believe God. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, Sister Tanya. Give us our reminders. All right, let's have a few announcements for everyone. I really enjoyed that song. That was great. Okay. <laughs> so this Saturday at 9 a.m., the clergy will be meeting, which is April the 6th, and then followed by the leadership meeting on Saturday at 10. And then the young adults will be connecting with each other on Monday, April the 8th at 8 p.m. That will be done virtually. And that is for those between the ages of 19 to 35. And it says, please join through Right Now Media for access to the group session. And these are our announcements. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. We thank God again for every one that came out tonight. Let's continue to pray much for one another. Praise God. You know, there's so much going on out. I got up early this morning, I turned the TV on, and I thought I was watching a horror movie. When I saw, what is it, Taiwan? Ta when I saw all those huge buildings, bleeding, earthquake, and those buildings just, it looked like something you would see in a movie. You know, so fiction, with a huge, tall building, still standing, but it was Leading to the side. Wow. Thanks to God. So much evil in the land today. God is trying to get our attention. So much evil in our country. In these United States. We're supposed to be the, the, the country that has the bright light. That's helping everybody. The leader in many ways. Praise God. But look at where we are today. Evil, hatred, bitterness, killing. God is trying to tell us something. God is trying to get our attention. And what it bothers me the most is the church. It's going along with scams and all kinds of things. It hurts when I see believers stressing out. You have a right to choose and when you come out to vote, you do what you want to do. But when you up and upholding evil, it hurts. Now, if you really know the Lord Jesus and you have, you just, it, I don't know about you, but maybe just me. It hurts when I see people that say that they believe, but yet they don't want to do what's right. But that's the word. Paul let us know clearly. The day and the time will come, man will really believe a lie. Then the truth. We are there. We are there right now. Let us all stand. We thank God. We thank God. Again, we thank you for being out tonight in the name of Jesus. Looking forward to seeing y'all on uh, those that are in the, uh, scheduled to be here on Saturday. Pastor, I know you will be looking forward to see all of us here of us leaders uh, and also the clergy, praise God, meeting. We want to want you to be, be out on Saturday. And then let's come back Sunday. What Sunday is a blessed day here. We celebrate and we worship the res own resurrection day. Praise God. And we thank God for it. We thank God for it. Something is happening. Something is going on. Praise God. We, Pastor myself, we've been talking about revival. The revival is actually happening right now. People are getting back into church. 
And that's what revivals would be all about, bringing people back to the Lord, bringing people to the Lord. So let us continue praying in that vein. Let's look to the Lord as we close. Oh, God, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your word tonight. Continue to bless us all. Help us to receive that word with gladness. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love, sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, rest, rule, and abide with us until we assemble again in Jesus' name. Can we all say amen? God bless you.